Duffy Tavern, where the elite may see the Archie the Manager speaking. Duffy ain't here. Oh, hello, Duffy. I'm glad you called. Look, how would you like to see Mrs. Duffy in an iron coat? With a sable girdle and mink garters. <laughs> It'd be a good excuse to set a trap. Oh. <clears throat> well, what I'm talking about is I want to make you rich, Duffy. I want you to take a flyer with me into the similar industry. Huh? Well, Duffy, there's big dough on it. A guy like you could have a mansion in Beverly Hills, big cars, personal balance so you don't have to soak your own feet. <clears throat> Huh? A swimming pool? You don't have to do it, I'm Duffy. You could keep water in one and Mrs. Duffy in the other. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, this movie deal would be terrific. For you. you see, I put up my brains, and you match it with your money. You wouldn't have to take this money. <laughs> huh? You'll think it over? Okay, Duffy, that's good enough for me. Hey, Eddie, guess what? I just talked Duffy into putting up the dough for me next picture. Oh, that's wonderful. What's the idea to whistle? I didn't want to wake you up. <laughs> you was having such a beautiful dream. If Duffy put up the money. Well, why not? I'm putting up my talent, ain't I? Eddie, you admit I got talent, don't you? <laughs> Eddie. Do you admit it or don't you? You want that question answered man to man or on a labor management basis? <laughs> <laughs> Look here, is, is, is this the same crummy picture you were trying to sell to Alan Ladd last week? Well, yeah, but I had to change it. I didn't figure Alan Ladd was big enough to support me. Mm. Well, who is? <laughs> That's just it. There ain't nobody. <laughs> So I have uh, wrote this new story just about myself. It's a story of my life, you know. Yeah, sounds very interesting. Will you excuse me while I go put out the garbage? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind about the garbage. Ain't you... Ain't you interested in hearing me life story? Well, okay. Six of one, half a dozen the other. All right. <laughs> I'll listen. Well, since you insist, here it is. It's a... Uh, Horatio Alger's story. It tells how Archie, the ragged street urchin, went from poverty and rags to become the Archie that he is today. Not much action, is there? <laughs> you ain't heard it yet. You see, it starts out with me environment. Scene one shows me as a baby in me nursery, you know, where I'm laying in me little castanette. <laughs> So my father, a gay, dashing hot carrier, uh, is, uh, is bending over me. So I look up at him, and realizing all he has done for me, I start to cry. So he decides to walk the floor with me. So he picks me up, lays me tenderly in his heart, and, uh, <laughs> and he waltzes me around the room. It sounds like a great part for Fred Astaire. <laughs> Astaire could never play it. Me father was strictly a flatfoot waltzer. <clears throat> well, anyway, suddenly me mother comes home after a hard day at Roseland, see? <laughs> Her feet are black and blue. Uh, you know, we're doing a picture in Technicolor. So... <laughs> So Mater says to the old man, she says, Fred, I got sad news. I lost me job today. I refused to do the shimmy. So? <laughs> so the old gent says, don't worry, Millie. We don't need that lousy ten cents to dance. We have other treasures. And with a tear in his eye, he points to me laying up there in a the hod. <laughs> and he says, we have riches. We have our rhinestone. Ain't that a sad opening, Eddie? Miserable. <laughs> I thought you'd like it. Well, in the next scene, I go from there to the tender years of me obsolescence, see? <laughs> when I began to search, I began to grope for the mystery of life. 
the in-between age, you know, when I was too tall for keyholes and too short for transoms. <laughs> the age of confusion, when I was grasping, when, when I didn't know where to go. Uh, is it too late for suggestions? <laughs> to continue, I didn't know which way to go, but suddenly it comes to me. I hear the call of Thespia. Actors' blood pounds at me pulse. My nostrils get filled by the smell of the grease ball. <laughs> I have been called. Yeah, put on your shoes, Mother. This is where we came in. Eddie, please. Once in a while, couldn't you keep that dopey mouth shut? Uh, oh. <laughs> Kid, how's every little thing? I don't bother them, they don't bother me. <laughs> Mexican standoff, huh? How close. And again, I'm uh, busy telling Eddie here about this movie I'm writing. Oh, well, maybe I could give you the benefit of my experience. What are you talking? You don't know nothing about the movies. Oh, no. I see every picture that's worth sneaking into. <laughs> Sneaking into the movies. Don't you know that crime don't pay? So what? Neither do I. <laughs> well, how do you manage to sneak in anyway? Oh, I got me method, John. <laughs> I, I just got a new one of beauty. What? Well, uh, I, I, uh, I saunter up to the door, man. Very nonchalantly, of course. And I kick him in the shin. And, uh... Then what? Well, if luck is with me, he punches me in the nose and knocks me flat. But how does that get you inside? God, uh, a high class D8 ain't gonna leave something like me laying around in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> now you get a punch in the nose, no wonder your face looks like a double feature. Have you got any other great methods like that? Oh, hundreds to the much. Listen to this one. I go up to the box office and I buy a ticket. So I, I take it into the doorman, and while he's tearing the ticket in half, I run inside and sit down. But that way, you you paid to get in. Well, I guess after all, no method is perfect. <laughs> Leave us assume that you don't know what you're talking about. What are some of these tricks that you want to tip me off to? Uh, well, for instance, if you need a guy to fall off a cliff, you don't have to have a real guy. You don't, huh? No. You use your dummy. Sorry, Finnegan. No casting today. <laughs> so we're not casting. That reminds me. That's another thing. Uh, you got to watch out who you hire. Uh, and take a tip. Stay away from that Raymond Lane. Why? What's the matter with him? Did you see the last weekend? No. Well, I don't know how they let him get away with it, but he went through the whole picture cockeyed drunk. <laughs> Will you please remind me next uh, Christmas to get you a pencil sharpener with a nice snap brim? <laughs> hello? Oh, hello, Duffy. Have you thought over the proposition? Huh? You what? You uh, <clears throat> just read in the paper where my last picture was one of the ten worst pictures of the year? <laughs> yes, but Duffy, did you happen to notice that it was first on the list? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, and this new one will make a fortune. Huh? Well, okay, don't do me no favors. There's plenty of other people that'll put up the dough. But just remember, someday, when you walk along the street and you hear people say, there goes the biggest jerk in town, then maybe you'll think of me. <laughs> uh, toss it around, kid. Uh, what is it? You don't know how to handle Papa. What do you mean? Well, you got to use psychology with him. Now, when I want to get money out of him, I sit on his lap, put my arm around his neck, and then I kiss him and say... My darling Papa is looking tired tonight. And then he goes to bed, and as soon as he's asleep, I take the money out of his pants. Duffy, 
I need money, but not bad enough to start necking with your old man. Well, um, maybe I could do something with him. On what basis? On the basis that if I get him to put up the money that I get a part in the picture. I take it back. I'll neck with your old man. <laughs> now, just a second, Archie. I'm not that hard to look at. You should be standing over here. In the Third Avenue Civilian Defense Beauty Contest they put on last year, who was elected queen? That's right, you were. Miss Waste Fats of 1945. <laughs> uh, now, look, don't... Don't do me no favors. I'll get the money someplace. <laughs> some particular sucker in mind, or is this going to be the straight house-to-house canvas? <laughs> if you don't mind, I'll just take the phone book, stands without no remarks. Okay. There you are. Let's see here. U, R, S, T, B, U. Here it is. Uncle Sam Park Shop. <laughs> Hello? Uncle Sam, this is Archie. Archie. Remember the wristwatch with the imitation alligator strap? Yeah. Yeah, well, Uncle, I got a big deal on, and I'm a little short of... Huh? Oh, your money's all tied up in cash, huh? <laughs> well, better luck next time. Uh, so long, Uncle. Oh, uh, just a second while I got you. Uh, don't forget to brush me blue serge suit. <laughs> I wonder if my bank would be willing to arrange a loan. Uh, Which one of your banks, the First National ticket? No. No, I've got a Chase National where I happen to be very well known. Let's see. Hello, Chase National. Uh, <clears throat> the manager, please. Uh, how do you do, sir? This is Archie speaking. Archie, uh, the tall, distinguished chap that comes in to fill his fountain pen. <laughs> Yes, uh, that's right. 
Look, uh, my corporation would like to liquidate a short-time fiduciary, and uh, <laughs> I was wondering if we gave you adequate security. Uh, hello? <laughs> Eddie, take their calendar down from over the bar. That's the last time I ever walk into that bank. Give me that, Schaefer. Back we go to the post office. What am I going to do? Pardon me. Are you the manager here? Yeah, why? Well, my name is Larry Storch. I'm an impersonator, and I'm looking for a job. Oh, yeah? Well, everybody's entitled to a chance. Kid, uh, impersonate me somebody. Okay. Ah, uh, Eddie. How beautiful you are. I would give anything to be with you. Come with me to the cars bar. Oh, yeah. I could... I could close my eyes and swear it was W.C. Fields himself. <laughs> Wait a minute. Europa, you give me an idea, kid. If Duffy heard I had a bunch of big movie stars to play in this picture... Uh, I, I just thought of a new way to sneak in. Please. Not now, Finnegan. Oh, by the way, Mr. Storch, this is Mr. Finnegan. Oh, it's uh, very happy to meet you. The side. <laughs> right, this guy talks like a moron. <laughs> well, you understood him, didn't you? <laughs> Go ahead, Larry. Uh, do another one here. Finnegan, uh, stand up here. It'll be <clears throat> it'll be the first time you ever did an imitation for an imitation. <clears throat> Go ahead. Okay. Oh? <laughs> Are you serious, Jockey? <laughs> really, my boy? I should like to say this town is in a terrible turmoil. Yes, I just came from a department store. I walked up to the young lady behind the counter and said, Do you have any notions? She said, oh, yes, I do, but I suppress them till 5.30. <laughs> Frank Morgan, that's terrific, kid. Who else can you do? Oh, Ronald Coleman, Humphrey Bogart, Clark Gable, Barry Fitzgerald. Give me that phone. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hello, Duffy. Duffy, a uh, new development has just arose. Yeah. Well, a whole bunch of big Hollywood movie stars just dropped in, and they all want to be in me pictures. Oh, Ronald Coleman, Humphrey Bogart, Clark Gable, Barry Fitzgerald. All right. If you don't believe it, I'll put one of them on the phone for you. Uh, Barry Fitzgerald, the lunch mine of yours. the top of the evening to you, Mr. Duffy. <laughs> What's that? Well, 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 of course, this is Barry Fitzgerald. Whom are you expecting, Mrs. Nussbaum? <laughs> Give me that phone, kid. Huh? Well, are you sold, Duffy? You think it's a trick? Okay, I'll convince you. I'll put on a scene with the whole parade of stars right now. <laughs> Trumpet, please. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we now present the free preview of that great forthcoming seminar picture, The Life of Archie. This stupendous drama features none other than Humphrey Bogart, Peter Lorre, Ronald Coleman, and Clark Gable. What, Duffy? No, no dames. <laughs> You don't realize that in Hollywood, dames are on their way out. 
Now, the first scene we present tonight takes place in Hollywood, the first day after I arrived here. The uh, scene in my hotel bedroom where I'm laying in bed asleep, dreaming. Dreaming of the experiences that are soon to be mine. Have a, have a. Have a, have a. Come in, Lana. Pardon me, sir. Oh. <laughs> Who are you? My name is Meadows, sir. The studio sent me over to see if there's anything you want. Well, I was just dreaming about... I guess that can wait, though. <laughs> uh, well, uh, glad you got here, Meadows. Uh, here, shine my shoes. Yes, huh? sir. Uh, shall I put some fresh paper in the soles, sir? <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd better not, Meadows. I'd rather not be accused of going Hollywood. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, before you shine them shoes, uh, would you mind to hand me me uh, embroidered shorts? You, you mean the ones with the big A on one side and you who on the other? <laughs> yes, that's right. Uh, what shirt would you wear, sir? What shirt? Oh, oh, I'll just keep this one on. I've only had four hours sleep. <laughs> As you wish, sir. Uh, shall I get you a pair of fresh socks? Uh, no, thank you. I'll uh, just alternate the ones that I got on. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is Hollywood, eh, Meadows? The city of dreams. Baghdad on a Pacific. Millions of meccas. <clears throat> but will it spell happiness? If I may say so, sir, with your looks, you can't miss it. Oh, don't be too sure. My looks, my looks are apt to be my curse. I see what you mean, sir. <laughs> yeah, them other stars are sure to knife me. That's probably one of them now. Who's there? Open the door. I want to talk to you. This is Humphrey Polgar. Let him in, Meadows. Now, look, kid. Let me give you a little bit of advice. Us actors out here had a pretty soft touch before you blew into town. And that's the way we're going to keep it, see? And if you're smart, you'll hop on the rattler and beat it right out of here. Okay, baby. I'll be right with you. <laughs> Guy. I'd just like to get in a picture with him sometime when he's an Indian and I'm a cowboy. <laughs> I guess that's another one. Come in. Well, Ronald Coleman, pip pip, old man. <laughs> you just dropped in in time for tea and tiffins. Uh... <laughs> Sit down. No, 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 thank you. And if you don't mind, I'll come to the point immediately. <laughs> I'm warning you, old boy, Hollywood can never become your Shangri-La. Oh, yeah? Says who, sir? Says I, sir. Now you seem to be rather a decent thought, in a crummy way. <laughs> so I'm going to give you a bit of advice. If you will leave here immediately, it will be a far, far better thing you do than you have ever done. I bid you good day, sir. What a Barclay Square. <laughs> they send six million dollars over to England, and him they leave here. <laughs> oh, another one. Who is it this time? This is Clark Gable, son. Oh, big ears. <laughs> Open the door and come in sideways. <laughs> yeah, now look, son. I want to tell you something. I don't want anybody cutting in on my territory, see? So blow. You stay on your side of the Mississippi, and I'll stay on mine. Now, take my advice, pal, and everything will be Roger. 
Just a second, Gable. You can't wilt on me just because you happen to be an ex-tail gunner. <laughs> on your mind. Nothing. But don't say I didn't warn you. Hmm. Well, that's the great Clark Gable. What's he got that I ain't got, Meadows? Miss Archie, do you mind at this point if I throw away the script and add a lip? <laughs> if you please, just read what is wrote in the script. <laughs> okay. I think you are much handsomer than Clark Gable. Mother, forgive me. <laughs> Back to the Meadows character. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Archie, my boy. Well, Peter Laurie. Don't tell me you're worried about me, too. <laughs> but of course, Archie. Do you know something? I've never been worried about my career before today. But when you walked off that train, I took one look at you, and for the first time in my life, I was frightened. <laughs> so please, leave Hollywood quietly. Don't make violence necessary. <laughs> Call me up and tell me your decision, will you? Okay, what hotel are you staying at? The Hollywood Plasma. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Duffy, now that you heard all them big stars, what do you say? Uh, do you want to precipitate in the picture? Huh? You do, eh? Well, uh, to what extent? You'll rent me your brownie. <laughs> but Duffy, but Duffy, with all of them big stars, it, huh? as long as I get all them big stars, I should get the money from them, huh? Okay. Hey, Sarge. Yes? How much dough you got? Any at all? I got 50 cents. 50 cents? 50 cents? What a nerve you got impersonalizing a lot of big movie stars with a lousy half a buck in your pocket. Meadows, ejaculate this bum. <laughs> Meadows. 